What's up, y'all? It's me, Tasha C. And in this particular video tonight, y'all, I got to take my glasses off of this one. Um, we will be reviewing the Half and Half Nots season three, whatever number this is, season finale. Okay, I'm back. Like I said, I'm trying to get back with y'all this evening, and I could, I could not at least say something on this last episode. Okay, shout out to my YouTube fam. If you're not part of my YouTube fam, you just subscribe to the button below right there and like and share this video y'all I love, love support of us and you know to my YouTube fan has already been there and future YouTubers but hi y'all yeah and I gotta do a loving you is wrong I'm trying to get back in a group of things whatever I know if y'all look for other videos I probably did one but like I said if y'all knew this or have not seen the recent videos I've been coming out for like the past month and a half or whatever on and off about what everything was going on so that's why you know, the videos I had I was going to put up or going bye-bye on my laptop. But that's not story. But anyway, y'all, well, when does the next season comes back or part three, uh, I mean part two or part three or, or season three, whatever. Anyways, y'all, let's get into the characters and it's going, it's, it was Banner, well damn, okay, that's really should have been the name of the episode, well damn, okay. So, first, we're going to talk about the Criers, okay. They're having this uh, confession, you know, let's have a, you know, a tequila moment to ask why to come down there. I think, you know, Jim asks him to come down there or whatever, right? And he's like, okay, what are you talking about? You know, Catherine's sitting right next to him. They just having confession time, you know, what do you want to know, son? First, he give him like, you know, drink another drink. Did you want another? Did you want another? Did you want another? And, you know, Catherine's like, why are you, you know, first question it, but he was just like, you know, I want my son since he want to be grown. He want to be grown. So they're basically, I guess, trying to celebrate the last night. I get to, you know, as far as we're having, as far as Jim is putting it out, he's basically saying there's two funerals, okay? Or um, funeral and a death or something. More so. Now, the funeral of Amanda is supposed to be tomorrow. And it's also supposed to be the death of Wyatt's freedom based on the conversation. Now, first he asked him, like, what do you want to know? And then he like, don't, you know, of course... Why, of course, took this time I'll let you know, you know, Dad, I hate your damn guts. What you been doing, Mom? Sleeping with all the help and everything else. And Candace. Of course, Jim is still trying to say that Candy is the one the reason why Amanda got in the situation. And then why let him know? Well, you should have been just not screwing Candace. And maybe we wouldn't be in the circumstances that we are tonight. Okay? So, anyways, we get to the point where, um, we sit here and this, and you know, talk about. He was like, I, you know, I had a sexual addiction. Once I get him, you know, love them and leave them, use them and abuse them. Then he don't pretty much want them anymore. Did I do too much singing of somebody else's song? Hoping copyright. Okay, it was only five seconds. But anyways, Captain let me know you ain't the only one who had some affairs. I only just had like four or five, and this one particular guy. Wicker was suave, that was a, a tennis instructor, somehow did magnificent things with his po ponytail. I don't know what type of hair fetish that I... Okay, never mind. But Catherine seemed happy, but she was just like, we just put it all out there. And then, you know, Jim decided, well, since it's confession night, I wanted to ask you something. Well, you got know, we already knew once he brought up Jeffrey's name, where this was leading to. Well, you know what? Jeffrey knows gay, correct? Jeffrey is also in love with you. And, um, I see sometimes how he looks at you. And, um, I just want to know. Um, and somebody look at him. Have you and Jeff He's like, why? Well, like, no. I'm straight. What are you talking about? But he's like, you know, you're going to be, you know, on, you know, you're going to be on the bottom, uh, of the bottom, uh, basically, because you're going to be raped on several occasions. Basically, Jim kind of said it. I'm paraphrasing, but God, it was kind of like he was saying. Because he's like, you're giving up your freedom based on being my daughter. And I'm going to drop off my son um, at prison day tomorrow. Because you basically give your freedom away since you confess to DH. You're going to use against you. And we're thinking, me and your mom's thinking about retiring, going somewhere, having drinks out of coconuts or some shit. And just going, you know, bye-bye. Okay. So... Here is even like a why would him? I think he walks out the room, but that's pretty much what the conversation was, you know. That I guess Catherine, but you know, Jim has said actually Catherine and him used to be in love when they were younger, but they basically stayed with each other for the sake of the kids type of thing, you know. 
you know, type of marriage or rela relationship altogether. And, you know, they realize, whatever. I don't know. They didn't say anything about them getting divorced this time. But, yeah. Okay. So, that situation. Now, even though I'm not posting the candy, it was already looking for a house or about to get a house, whatever. And now, all of a sudden, this episode, she's making, you know, it's still making her rounds at the hotel. Recently, still, it was just now from the last episode, um, David is still there after Veronica, you know, just basically, you know, cleaned up the bar, uh, literally, and not, you know, with sponges, just knocked everything out of the way, right, right, so, Maggie's still there, and Landon's there, whatever, but first Maggie, I think Landon's there, and then Jeffrey meets up with them for a second, I think, or, no, 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 it was David first, because I swear, Jeffrey, we were about to tell you in probably a couple minutes, Jeffrey turned into David Jr., okay, so, Anyways, David, you know, was talking about, I guess he didn't want them to tell Jeffrey about what, you know, happened to his mom, you know, mom or something. Don't tell Maggie. But David, like I said, with so much going on, I'm not going to particular order. But let's just say David was there one time, but then Maggie had noticed something was wrong with him. They were saying somehow getting a private investigator um, for somebody, I think Len, uh, Maggie was calling about, right? But David, basically you know, had this look in his eye like something was wrong and stuff like that. And Maggie he even said, like, you know what, just let her cool off. Don't go there until tomorrow. And but David's like, you know what, I'm sick of time, you know, because she was like, what's wrong? But he's like, you know, he's just sick and tired of it. He didn't go into details. But he's like, you know what, I'm handling this, whatever, you know, and that's that. And then he leaves. Then you've got Jeffrey covered there. Then Candace finally comes there. And I think Maggie kind of leaves after, like, you know, David leaves, right? So... We got here that when they're talking, Landon first was trying to tell Ken, don't tell Jeffrey about that his mom kind of did this. And he let she let Jeffrey know that, like, yeah, your mom is cray cray. Okay? So, all of a sudden, here come Melissa. Hi, Jeffrey. I'm here. I need to talk to you. Um, can you please talk to me, please? And you're, I really need to talk to you. And Candace's like, what the hell is wrong with you and Jeffrey? You know, Jeffrey's still in that mold frame. He was like, oh, okay. And takes her to the room. Okay. Because she's talking, you know, like, if not, whatever. So when she's, she's like, no, we must, we must have sex. We must have sex. Okay, it sounded like she was talking from a science class and she was a goddamn personal android. And she basically all of a sudden, you know, goes on and was like, come on. I can guess it because she's talking before she even takes her clothes off, y'all. She's even saying, you know what? Because Jeffrey's like, I'm gay. Don't you get it? And even I think Gannis was telling me, he's gay. Don't you get it? Blah, blah, blah. And she's just like, I don't care. I don't care. We have to. I, I, I can work for you. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking like, uh, she's talking about you can get gay porn. We can bring a man to the bedroom. I can be whatever you want to be, girl. You don't have what he, he's attracted to or wants to be relation. You know, just, you know, anything like, you know, besides, you know, uh, I'm just saying, he's not sexually attracted to you, but she's just like, we must, we must do it, we must do it. And, you know, as soon as she took her, you know, down to a drawers, but Candace, you know, survives the way, I think she knocks the door, so Candace comes in the room. Because Jeffrey's just like, what the hell are you doing? Because she's like, let's have sex again. You know, she's just on some, an you know, acting like an android that's been programmed to say, have sex with Jeffrey at any cost. Okay? Make him like you at any cost. And so... When Candace comes into the new room, she checks the bag like, you know, we about to do purse check, bitch. And she looks, and she's like, what is wrong with you? You know, when she looks at the information, we she's been going to the hospital every single day, stuff like that, credit cards. And Nolan's this, this stick, which I first thought was a pregnancy stick, but it was an ovulating stick. So I thought, you know, she was, of course, tr um, trying to supposedly um, plan a pregnancy. But, you know, Candace even let the girl know, like, you know what, you're really desperate. And now, obviously, you're trying to get him for some money, blah, blah, blah. You know what, if you want me to put you on the whole stroll, bitch, yeah, I can put you right on and we can make this happen if that's needed. And she's just like, I, you know, she because she's trying to claim I'm not that way. And so she leaves, put on, you know, the the also known as, and I'm going undercover, also known as I possibly might be naked if I want to surprise somebody for the right or wrong reasons, or also known as, um... Yeah, did I say this detective already? But I'm just saying, you know that darn brown coat, or uh, also known as I'm, I, I, you know, a coat I seen in a couple '70s shows uh, that came out. Okay, um, coat, that trench coat. That that's pretty much what she left in with, besides her heels and her, her you know, face and, and just her dress in her hand. And she's letting him know, like, cause you know she already let Jeffrey know that it was an ovulating stick before the girl had left, or basically Candace put her on a blast. 
she left and she's just to let her know and Jeffrey still cool is even that her mom even though his mom just admitted that she had him jump by Quincy's crazy ass and but still he is still kind of like tuning out and still trying to say in a way that his mom is still innocent he still is tuning out reality or make excuses for Veronica okay and the V is for vicious okay with a capital V okay so um he's like uh you know because soon as they call uh, obviously Melissa's ass is that the girl's name whatever um calls Veronica and obviously through Surrey on speed dial and FaceTimed her basically whatever and told her that she you know I don't know if she FaceTimed but she had called her instantly and you know because you know, she called her at the room that Jeffrey was in and you know Candace tried to warn him don't pick that up don't have to pick that up bro he of course picked it up and he said he has to go over there okay so already Veronica feels some type of way because of how David confronted her already so when he gets there y'all because you know like I said Candace trying to warn him he bounces and leaves, right? So, when uh, he ends up leaving, um, you know, he ends up leaving, seeing his mama, and we'll get to that scene in a minute, because all, no, we'll get into that now, and then we'll go to the next scene with the section of Benny and the Quincy situation, because now I'm like, well, okay, and the last part. But, so when she gets there, I first thought, literally, she was just smoking a damn blunt, but it was supposed to be a cigarette okay and you could tell she's sitting there compared to how Veronica even looks even when she's good going to bed and everything else you could tell like she was on one she's just like this and she is so off y'all in the way I don't know why she reminded me of Sophia's character in that Christmas dinner scene the second time you know like when she got there I mean she just was like tuned out somewhere else and she's just like hey, you know what but this is just call me you know what um because she was like she was sick and tired of him you know i tried dress it was a boy and you always wanted barbie mad boo trucks and jeeps and everything he's like i never played with no dolls you might as well you want to be a girl don't you i'm disgusted blah blah, blah. but guess what negro you's going to be a daddy i set it up we ovulated we took blood types i told her to pee in the cup everything we went and got a, um, a variety pack of ebt tests and it turns out you is gonna be daddy and you're gonna marry her what's wrong you don't want to marry that's basically what the hell she was saying like okay whatever i know i've been drinking look like she at least had two fifths the way they made it seem like okay but she was just letting her know like i'm disgusted with you but guess what i have plan b you're one way or the other she's going to keep forcing jeffrey to make him straight so jeffrey Finally, because I first thought we were going to have to either make a go personal GoFundMe account for Jeffrey's character or maybe a second option is a PayPal account because somehow we didn't know, know if Jeffrey was going to get a backbone, you know, and we were, already, we were waiting damn near season three for him to get one. Like, come on now, bro. And after everything that Veronica continues to do, like, it has to be a breaking point, okay? There's always a breaking point for some, you know, for something. So, he just... All of a sudden, I swear in the eyes, I mean, you know, whatever, he turned into David and Junior for a second because he started car simple, my you evil manipulative, blah blah blah, and she cut him off because I knew I was getting the point of surprise that he didn't call her a bitch, right? And but she didn't. She's just like you know whatever, blah blah blah. Don't you talk to me the way? And Jeffrey's like you know I deserve to be loved, whatever. It just happens to be whatever, and I deserve that or whatever. Why, you know, I don't, I'm sick and tired. You keep hurting me. You're not going to hurt me anymore. And I'm done with you. I'm out. Something like that speech and walks out off. And as soon as Veronica just sits back down, just steals some delusional stuff like this. Well, I wonder what we're going to name the baby. Okay. Like I said, we just see the down spot. We see it all Veronica's face, you know, Maybelline, Mac or whatever cannot hide whatever the diral spiral is it's just so readable you know it can only be so much makeup can cover up in photoshop okay and that's what the hell is going on in veronica all right so let's get on to the other part that stood out because i'm not gonna go do everything and the main part is we see quincy now i want to know where's the baby i didn't see the episode but okay he quincy 
trying you know earlier i think that around that day around the same time goes of course to hand you know hannah's house again and he's like called her and he's like i'm outside she's like i'm gonna call the police and then when she reels I, it turns out not you know candy's uh, son is alive but he has the child in possession. He's hanging the child upside down, whatever, I guess, on the porch or on the porch. And that's one of the reasons why I show up the door and because it's a grandbaby. And she's just like, I want my grandson. And he's like, you're going to tell me what Candace is. And she's like, I don't know where she is. She knows somewhat that Candy was at the hotel, but she's trying to, in a way, she's like, I want my grandson. She, I, she holds him for a second. And he takes the child, pour the child back and stuff like that. And she's just like, I just want my grandson. And he pimp slap her to the point that there's a bruise on her face and she's even trying to go in the car like give him you know my grandma no where are you going she was lucky he didn't roll her feet or no shit like that and he kept on going whatever with the child and now that's a question too we gotta wonder is in the next you know when they come back where is candace baby okay because now we know the child's alive i didn't see like i said i've been watching my other youtuber youtubers videos youtube's fan cousins youtube cousins too so i did not no, I don't recall any of them saying anything, at least to my knowledge, about the clip. But like I said, where's the baby? We got to find the baby now, for real, for real, because the baby's alive now, okay? And thank God. But he's in possession of that whole, whole um, heartless, soulless demon daddy he got. So he took off with the child, whatever. Benny comes home, got some takeout with some favorite food. And Hannah first was trying to hide the side of her face. Then once... Ben since face, she tried to do the old, oh, I fail, but I'm trying to cover up something, whatever routine, you know. And then she admitted that he, he was over. Ben kept asking questions. He was like, you know, put two two together and realized, of course, it turns out to be Quincy. Okay, Quincy was the one who did this. So he's just like, you know what? We'll talk, whatever. I'm going to find him. And Hannah already knew with some trouble involved this. She tries to go after him. And he's like, no, mama, no. Let me take care of this. And he takes off. Then, all of a sudden, he meets up a war. Goes back to the neighborhood, whatever. You know, where Jim had a, you know, a lovely stay for a night. Okay. And, you know, area. And he wants to know where Quincy is. And they told him, you know, he, you know, war makes a call. And he's at this script club. And so he ends up finding him and, you know, basically Benny, you know, we see weights, you know, whatever. And he sees Quincy's as going to the car and then he's like this, you know what I mean? Uh, um, let's go ahead and do he, but let's go there. That's what Benny was saying. My, he decided to pull daddy, little girl, Tyler Perry's move, move on him. The famous, I slam the car in there, then beat your ass when you get out the car. I take your car out. I'm just saying. Yeah, that was the name of the movie, right? So he, daddy, you know, daddy little girls, him, as far as taking his ass out the car and beat him up and stuffing him up. And then, you know, we see the special bitch. We already know probably the police is coming. And here goes another scene. So right in between, it seemed like a little bit after Jeffrey left or why life stuff out of rolling. Jeffrey, you know, I think... Gets landed, you know, I think Landon comes to see him, whatever, in his room or something like that, right? And all of a sudden, well, I'm starting to hear some light music that possibly could be a foreign intro or not, or no. And next thing we know, Jeffrey take off shirt, even though he's still holding from, you know, still recovering from, you know, how his ribs, you know, ribs is pretty still messed up. And, but he's all in Landon's just like this. Oh, Jeffrey, Je Jeffrey, whatever, next minute, you know. Um, he take it off, uh, like I said, Jeffrey take off his shirt and get stopped and start kissing Landon. And so, um, yeah, and that's how it ends that scene. So we'll see how that comes out, okay? So, then we go back, like I said, Benny calls Veronica, uh, 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 Veronica, whatever. David already comes back into the, to the house around this time. And you know how Veronica was kids warning him. Don't come, but uh, you, you stay here tonight. You know, you, you, you're you okay, you keep messing with me, whatever, you ain't gonna make me just saying all this stuff, whatever, you know, right? And David's like, you know, we're about to get you some help. And, you know, Veronica's still thinking that David is the one who set her up with the DA, told her car, and she's still like this. Oh, so was she down on her knees, you know, referring to Maggie and stuff like that? Because he's just like about her getting help. So he's like, oh, you're gonna use and put me in the psych ward and stuff like that. Put me in a straight jacket and try to use that against me and whatever. And David's just like, you just sound even more crazy. Because, you know, already he's seen that she's drinking. And you know how she's been sober for several... I guess several years, you know, because she had a problem with that before. And now all of a sudden, she just down on spot. So David's just not paying mind. He was like, this is my house, too. I'm about to go sleep on my sleep number bed and see your ass in the morning, okay? 
And, you know, Veronica Hardy just like this. So by the time she gets the call by Ben, Benny, whatever, she gets him out of jail, whatever. Then some, I already knew something might be possibly a little bit different. So she asks him, can, you know, you know, in her, what was it, Lincoln? I, I know she had some type of SUV, I think it was a Lincoln Navigator, something like that, right? So she asks him when she gets him out of jail, you know, whatever, you know, uses her words, more degrees in the thermometer, whatever she said, gets him out. Because we don't see what negotiations she did to get him out, whatever. So, she has him drive, and then she's like, pull over to the side, whatever. And Benny was just like, okay, are you okay? And she said, my husband having an affair and stuff like that. And he's just like, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And that was just like, and she gave him that look like, you're going to get some. And Benny had to look like, okay, I'm, I hope to get some, but I'm trying to stay good type of look at the same time. And all of a sudden, Veronica started kissing him. And, you know, Ben didn't push her away. Like, no, no. He was just like, no, we shouldn't be doing this. Here she do it again. Kiss him again. You know, trying to probably give him some tongue. So, no. And then the third time, no. And then she just, all of a sudden, he just still, the next minute, they just making out, whatever. And then, next minute, I know, it seemed, we see the process that, um, you know, Veronica was getting ready to blow, was going to blow Benny's mind. And I'm not just talking about in conversation. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we, you know, we, all of a sudden he drops, you know, like later on she, he drops off and I mean, Benny got, he got two damn cars now. He paid 500 for new charger that now he got to get out, you know, probably, you know, um, from the impound. But I mean, whatever occurred, which was some type of sexual activity, he's like, you know, do you want me to drop the car tomorrow? She's like, you keep it. And then she just give a look and he just give a look when she get out the car. I'm just like, damn, man, what the, okay, now <laughs> <laughs> it looked like Ben to a certain degree and for and the fortunate BS that's going Quincy as you know with his mom and the issue with well, Candace and everything going by to a certain degree depending how you look at it Ben to have us having the uh the a uh, bittersweet best day ever night ever somewhat ain't it? I mean I mean it's bittersweet because that's still what we're going on with that Quincy stuff all right so that's pending so Veronica goes in the house and somehow there's a gasoline can that I don't know where the hell she got it from, but you know, out the house or whatever. Cause you know, like I said, she let Benny keep her car, so she, you know, and she goes upstairs. But did you notice how all of a sudden did, did, did she? It just seemed like what did she do? Just shaking her hair, which is fabulous. Come to think about it, because she showed looked totally different. Like going to make sure she get Benny. Like she just. For her to be tore up, you know what I mean? It's like she planning on getting some or getting some revenge D, you know, one way or the other. Because the way she looked toward that house to sit here looking like she can be on the, the next um, new um, olive oil perm box. She was just totally fabulous compared back to the fabulous that we know about Veronica, okay, with a style and everything, right? I'm just saying, alright? So, she... Goes in there, you know, lights a cigarette, whatever, and puts a gas in on David, like I said, sleeping, is, you know, uh, sneaking up, sleeping up, they're sleeping up a bed, and just sat there, and, you know, lights up the, uh, he, um, lights up the room, you start hearing the fire, some of that, he's still snoring, and then she goes around the porch, and sits down with her cigarette, you know, kind of, you know, no, it ain't waiting to hell, no, because she just burned some clothes, no, I'm not talking about that, but I'm just saying, she was sitting down, right in the house and that's and we start seeing credits and that's it and that's all that stood out i'm sorry if i forgot to cover everything but lord willing i plan on oh hey, yes hold on i said lord willing and just was cussing everything and this, this stuff whatever lord forgive me y'all but what i'm saying is is you know is that i plan on you know i do want to be able to review the next season whatever this episode was i'm just hmm it's just getting better in in some hmm moments but anyway, y'all, y'all pleasant week, pleasant night, pleasant weekend. And I definitely will see y'all in the next video. But like I said, I we, we like this. Hmm. It wasn't a person to me. It wasn't too bad of a as a feast season finale. Because I wasn't expecting Benny to be not, you know, we already know he been lost with the goody two shoes move ever since, especially since he came out the hospital. But dang, Veronica, dang, okay. I'm not I, I thought it was gonna be her and Quincy first. Not her bit. Hey! Like I said, it was worth watching. But anyway, y'all, I'll see y'all next one. Take care.